Hey. Ah, all right. Got it working. A little rough there. All right. Um, this is a great verse, but, uh, you know, the Bible is a double-edged sword, no doubt about it. Um, there's, there's some warning here in this verse, and, I, you know, these verses, I, you know, I... He's, he's warning people who are just not not picking it up, not getting it, not understanding. Um, you know, he doesn't want anybody to be left behind. He wants you all to come home. He does not wish to pour out his wrath on his children who have went astray. So now they're their father of this world, uh, Satan, who has given dominion over this world for a time, for a time. And his time's up. Uh, everything's being wrapped up. What, like I said, we are on the morning of the third day that Christ rose from the grave. His body rose, so his body's going to raise. And we're also at the beginning of the uh, seventh day, in the morning of the seventh day, when God rested. And Christ is God incarnate. Jesus is God incarnate. And God will rest on the seventh day, for sure. And uh, the reason I'm saying that, if you haven't caught some previous videos, is Second uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Do not be ignorant of this fact. A day to the Lord is as a thousand years. And so, I mean, and there's so many references. You could go back and look at multiple examples throughout the scriptures. No doubt about it. That proved that out. And um, he said he's declared the end from the beginning. Six days created the heavens and earth. Seventh, he rested. You know, man is allotted, uh, what was it? Uh, 100, 120 jubilee years, which times 50 is a jubilee year. That's 6,000 time period. He's creating his kingdom purifying his kingdom to come back home and uh you know in the day you eat of this fruit you will surely die adam lived 930 years but spiritually they were separated and died and understand that because that's what occurred to all of us that's what occurred to all of us we were spiritually separated from him and birthed into this world there's spiritual meaning there's physical meaning and the spiritual is being played out in the physical all that this verse is a little rough but you know, I'm going to go through it because he wants me to. So there's that. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 36. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Okay, understand that. You're not quick to, quickened, except it die. Pick up your cross and follow me. You have to die to the flesh, die to the things of this world. Like, like a seed that goes into the ground and is buried. It cannot sprout up and bloom and flourish into something new unless it's buried in the ground. All right, so here we go. 1 Corinthians 15, 36. And I'll take every word back to its origin um, using the lexicons and the strongs. And uh, his Holy Spirit led me right through it pretty quick. I mean, this is definitely uh, somewhat of a warning here. I hope I can put out the way he wants it put out. Here we go. You are without reason. You are without reason uh, and by a reflection. You are the opposite by a privation. That means lacking what is essential for life. You've been separated from God himself, the source of all life, which is a union to Christ. There it is, which is a union to Christ. You are ignorant. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is coming. His Holy Spirit wants it out there. So you are ignorant and specifically egotistical, egotistic, specifically egotistic, rash and unbelieving in heart and mind by a partition, which is a separation of the body. By the separation of your body, you are lost. Uh, you are divided. You're in a state of division, divided. Lacking the cognitive ability to understand whom in all their inflections strain from the straight and narrow way. You have strayed from the straight and narrow way. You are omitted the definite article. You are not born again yet. Yet, yet, hopefully. You're not born again. You are omitted the definite article. Wherein whom you scatter seed. So you scatter seed of sayings as a sower to draw, to draw one sword. To draw one out, to arouse them, to wake them up from sleep, to arouse and invigorate by a, the spiritual power to quicken to life, to quicken them to life. True life in the kingdom of God, having the vital power of the living water itself and exerting the same upon the soul to live and to be made ready, having been purged for a purpose to raise up a yield by a personal commitment in the designation of time that we live in, right? If not, if not, whosoever is to perish, 
like trees which dry up and seeds which rot when they are planted by eternal death and misery and hell, by a separation where the union and the fellowship of the two is destroyed by a physical and distant temporal place. That's this world when we're birthed into it. That's this world, okay? Where one is taken, where we are taken and falls, where we have fallen, where we fall. We're taken and we fall from sin. We have fallen from our place of origin and we were taken, deceived, captive by Satan, by this covering of this physical body that was put over us that we chose willingly to indwell, to become our own gods, to become like the Most High, to worship ourselves. Thou shalt have no other God before me. If you've broken the first, you... You have broken them all, and we've broken the very first. If you have broken one, which means the first, we broke the first to become our own God, to go our own way. We have strayed from the straight and narrow way, which is a, a union and fellowship and connection with Christ God himself when we were in his heavenly kingdom. We've departed. We were led astray like sheep being led to the slaughter. Okay? It is destroyed by a physical and distant temporal place where one is taken and falls by, by a cause to become like the Most High, to know good and evil. By a cause of a departure, it was our own willful ignorance that we chose to leave and follow another voice. We turned our face from our Father and we listened to another voice, Satan, the very first liar. And this says, to be spiritually dead. We were separated. We are not born into life like the churches teach. Oh, we're born in this glory image of God. No, we're in direct contrast. We are the opposite. Just like this verse says, until you are born again of the spirit from above, because God is spirit and must be worshiped in spirit. And that's why Christ showed us the way to go back home. I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. He showed us the way. This flesh must be crucified. You cannot be quickened unless you die. And understand that we all have a duty and a job here that God has. Uh, he's the creator of everything. He is the foundation. He is the creator of everything. Everything exists by him, for him, and through him. Um, understand that. But we were given free will, and as well, so was Satan, right? And he has deceived us. I will exalt my throne above the stars of heaven, but right? above, And he's done it. God, he's led his the stars, the angelic host, the Elohim, he's led them astray, and we were birthed into death, a separation by our ignorance and weakness, of, you know, just wanting to understand and know the knowledge of good and evil, which God forbid, but he allowed it, just like a child. Don't touch that stove, and they touch it. They get burnt, right? There you go, and that was us. Um, so this is a warning to those people, and his Holy Spirit told me something after I was going through this, and finishing it up, I, I just felt his Holy Spirit telling me, and, and, I've, and I've seen it, justice is coming, justice is coming, but his Holy Spirit was telling me, judgment is at the door, judgment is at the door. So uh, mankind, and unfortunately, it's not just people who completely reject Christ, there's people, the majority of the churches, when the uh, catching away, the harpazo occurs, the majority of every church will be left behind be left behind uh, because they're these churches the majority of churches just cater to this physical world this flesh you know it's spiritual you have to be connected he has to know you you have to be indwelt by his holy spirit you must be born again like he told nicodemus in john i think it's john chapter three uh, you must be born again of the spirit otherwise you will not see the kingdom of heaven nor will you enter in that is the key, the key of David, the key of love, the key of truth, the key of true life, eternal life that opens the door so you can walk through it, accompanied by Christ, Holy Spirit, God himself, dwelling inside of your tabernacle, tabernacle, your temple, right? That opens that door to the heavenly realm because when he looks at you, he sees his only begotten son, Christ, who loved us so much that he died for us. And he just wants us to come back home. He accepts everybody right where they are. So... Uh, just turn to him and ask his forgiveness and ask him to indwell you, uh, reveal himself to you, to speak to you, and he will, and he will. It's a beautiful thing when you when those blinds are lifted off your eyes because now you'll see through his eyes, his spiritual eyes, when he indwells you, and you'll see things all around you and other people and things you read, things you watch, the news, music. He opens your, heals your deafness, heals your blindness. You can see the reality of the spiritual world that we're surrounded by that most the majority of people cannot see and don't understand 
because this whole world is designed to cater to your flesh and keep you deceived, to keep you ignorant, your mind at this ease, keep you divided and separated from God, from a true union and companionship with him. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing, but this is definitely a warning. Judgment is at the door. Uh, he says, you're without reason. No man has a reason. He calls us all. He's a perfect judge. Uh, we're the opposite. So are we created in the image? He says, we're in direct contrast to him. Until you're born again, then you're likened back unto God spiritually. We just haven't made that transition to that glorified body that he is in right now that we'll be able to uh, physically hold him and he'll be able to touch us and we'll be able to relate with God himself who we can't comprehend except through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So there's that. All right. My hands are sore. That's why I'm not wringing them from, they're just so sore when I work. My thumbs, I've broken them so many times. It's crazy. All right. So there's that. God bless you. Hope you got something out of it. Hopefully this ain't speaking to you, you know, hope, you know, but share it for sure. He wants everybody to come home. He wishes none would perish, right? That's the mind of God, that none perish. All right, God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.